Hello, I'm Chek, and welcome to my talk. I'm going to um, introduce you a very, very good tool today, uh, which is Singer.io. So, what it is, how to use it, I'm going to tell you. Um, before I start, uh, here are my contact information here on the screen. So, if you have further questions, um, feel free to also contact me um, on Twitter. So, I'm Chuck. As you may already tell, I love open source. And um, luckily, right now I'm working for Terminus DB, which is an open source graph database. Also, today I'm going I'm going to show you an open source tool. Um, also, I've been love to go to um, different Python events to meet all of you. Um, I have been involved in multiple local meetups uh, here in my city, London. Also, I've been in the board of the Euro Python Society. Um, I've also been involved in PyData Global. And uh, furthermore, I am also organizing an online conference um, at the early December this year. You're all welcome to join. Hopefully, I can give you more details at the end. Also, um, during the lockdown, I have been streaming multiple times on Twitch as an experiment. So uh, um, you feel free to go to watch all the highlights and also watch the recordings on YouTube. So first of all, what is Singer.io? Well, it's an open source ETL tool. So imagine it as a tool that can help you to manage your data transporting your data from one place one place to another. Um, it consists of multiple tabs and targets, um, which, as you can imagine, tabs are like the tabs in your kitchen. They are taking all the data from one place, maybe a database um, or an API to the system. <laughs> and targets is the place that um, we are sending the data to. So I will give you more details later. So with these tabs and target, you can mix and match and build your own pipeline, just like different components in your pipe system at home. So you can have a tab and maybe another pipe. You can connect them together and water will come from one place to another. Um, also, you will be using Python. <laughs> I guess most of you love Python since you're here. So um, we will be developing with Python. So you may ask, why do I have to use or develop uh, Singer.io tabs or targets? Um, why didn't I just use whatever API that is provided to manage my data? So, well, the first advantage will be it's free because it's open source, it's very transparent. You can look at how it works. Also, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, for example, getting data from, uh, let's say, Google Spreadsheet. Someone has already done it. Why you have to build it all from scratch? Um, also, it opens a lot of options for the users. Um, they may want to take data from your database and put it in different places with Singer.io tabs and targets. So different users um, can choose their own endpoint or the other endpoint, which is where the data came from, um, to work with your product. So it opens up opportunities. Um, last, it's very easy to maintain your pipeline because all these tools are quite standard. Um, you don't have to, you know, two of you may write different tools to get data from the same place. If you have a universal tool, then it's very easy to maintain. So let's have a deeper look at Singer.io. So this is their website. And as you can see, they offer a lot of tabs and targets. And this is not the only list. I have developed a um, Singer.io tabs for Terminus DB and a Singer.io target for Terminus DB, which are available on PyPI. 
but it's not listed here. So this is not a complete list of all the available tabs and targets. They may be the one that is more commonly used. So as you can see, there are a lot of options. <laughs> so let's have a deeper look at uh, their GitHub repo. So as you can see, um, all of them, all of these tools, the tabs and targets are built with um, saying a Python, which is, uh, you know, powered by Python. <laughs> so uh, if you have some understanding in Python, you can also develop your own tabs and target. They also provide some templates for you to get started very quickly. So let's have a look. All the documentations are set in the GitHub repo here. And fo by following them, I am able to develop a tab and a target for Terminus DB. So let's look at what the documentation is talking about. So as you can see a demo here that what a, ta a tab did is to get data from the tab that you are designing specifically for. For example, my Terminus DB tab would be getting, would be um, used as a tool to get data from Terminus DB and then convert it into a form mesh that will print at the standard out stream. So in this stream, you have to consist of a few things. You can have to write a schema. You have to be able to write a record and a stay message. So with the template, a lot of the heavy lifting has been done for you, but still you have to customize how a schema and a record is going to be printed at the standard uh, output. So um, also it mentions that um, the, the format will be using JSON schema, which we will be dive into the details later. So this is a tab. A target is developed in a very similar manner. So to develop a target, you have to take these three messages and be able to reconstruct the data in the target. For example, if I'm developing for a target for Terminus DB, I have to build a tool that's able to take these um, JSON formatted schema record to reconstruct the data in Terminus DB, which hopefully I'll be able to show you in a bit. So this is uh, the general idea how you can start developing a um, single IO tabs and target. My advice would be use the template that is provided and also look at some of the already existing tabs and target and see how it works. One thing to bear in mind though, different tabs and target will be using a different versions of the Singer Python, as you can see here. So Singer Python will be used, uh, will be the dependencies of different tabs and targets. So depending on when the tabs and target is developed, they may use different versions of Singer Python. So bear that in mind, that is something that uh, we have to deal with <laughs> as a target or tab developer, also a user as well. So let's talk a little bit about JSON schema. So um, JSON schema is, so what this is? <laughs> um, so I think that I can show you a little bit about JSON schema. So JSON schema, if I can put it in here. So you can see it's, uh, so there is another website about JSON schema here. I know the fonts is too small for you, so I will just give you a brief introduction. So this is um, a form mesh that is standardized uh, by a group of developers. So that's why there is a, a special a separate website about it. Um, so there is, it's just a standard protocol for um, how it works and how to describe a schema using this JSON schema format. So if you're interested, you can go to this website and have a look. But the advantage of JSON schema 
is that it's human and machine readable, just like any JSON. It's easy because it got the structure for the machine to process, but it's also can be read by a human eyes. Also, it's universal. Like I said, it's a format that is created by a group of developers. Uh, so it's a separate organization that um, to so it's uh, it's accepted in multiple places, not just for single I/O tabs and target. It's flexible. Um, it's JSON, <laughs> so uh, there is possibility to build nested structured, and um, so there's less limitation compared to, um, for example, the structure of a relational database. Also, in JSON schema, you can build references across different um, objects, but that's more advanced, so I'm not going to go into detail here. Um, but the disadvantage of JSON schema is that it can get complicated very quickly. As those of you who have dealt with JSON before, um, JSON is a, a way to store a nested structure. So a nested structure can get complicated very easily, very quickly. And with also the support for using cross references, it can get really, really complicated. <laughs> Sometimes it's difficult to debug because of these massive nested structure, even though it's readable for human eyes, uh, to spot what you have made a where you have made a mistake could be a challenge. Also, the data types can be a bit unclear. Um, I have came across a few data types in JSON schema. For example, um, there's one data type for both integer and decimal numbers. So they are just called numbers, which um, for my personal taste is a bit unclear. I want them to be separate. So after talking all those, I would like to spend the rest of the time in this talk to show you what I have built and how to use them. So uh, before I dive into it, um, there is our, this is our GitHub repo, Terminus DB. Um, so this is the organization. And we have a Terminus DB tutorials uh, repo. That's for those of you who is interested to give Terminus DB a try and to um, try out the single IO uh, tabs and target as well. So we have two tutorial, a few tutorials here that uses singer.io, for example, um, we have this tutorial that you demonstrate how to um, export the data from Terminus DB to a Google spreadsheet. Um, but today we are not going to dive into it. There is also another repo here, um, GitHub data. So this repo, um, there's also uh, like so for this one and also the Google spreadsheet one, uh, there are recordings of me demonstrating it. So it, in case you want to know more, um, you can watch those videos. Today I have limited time. I can only show you a bit of it. And also I want to explain uh, more about how I develop it. So, um, so in this uh, tutorial, you will see how I um, use the GitHub tab con in conjunction with the Terminus DB target that I can get all the GitHub star information into um, a Terminus DB database. So uh, let's look at uh, our tabs and target. So here um, you can see that this is the Terminus DB tab. Um, it's published on PyPI, so you can install it with a pip install. So um, it needs to be used in conjunction with a target. So um, you can go through the tutorial to see how it can be used um, with the Google spreadsheet target. Let's look at the code. So the code is very straightforward. Uh, I'm using the template that was provided 
visinger.io. Um, I just need to customize the init.py. And I have to customize how I load in the schema because I have to get the schema from Terminus DB, which here I use the Terminus DB clients to do it. So after that, I have to do some data, um, data marshalling or uh, formatting to put it in there. So hope you can see it better now with the screen zooming in. <laughs> and also, um, you may have to customize a few other things because by default, um, single.io tab, uh, you have to do a process called discovery to um, show you what's all the available schemas in the database. Uh, but with this tool, I have made a little bit of uh, modification with that. So um, if you go back to README, you'll see that um, all you need to do is to, in the config file, have to specify the uh, type of uh, the data that you want to get back um, in this tab. So um, this is uh, an improvement that I have, uh, I have added in. But otherwise, the standard procedure will be you have to use the tab in discovery mode to discover what are all the available targets in JSON schema format, which can be complicated very quickly, <laughs> um, and then choose your stream. But uh, in Terminus DB, since we have all these other objects or documents, act, uh, um, uh, label with different types. So you can just pick the type that you want. So let's look at the target. So for the target is the other way around. Um, so, but again, like you can install it with pip because it's on PyPI. <laughs> um, so here you see that uh, target need to be used in conjunction with a tab. But uh, since a tab can be um, more easy, you just need to create those streams. So uh, a simple Python script can also do the job by writing the schema and the record streams. Um, so this is a quick example that you can try it yourself. But right now I have to skip because I don't have enough time to do it. Let's have a look at the code. So again, I'm using a um, template that's provided by Singer.io. So um, in this uh, template, uh, you are also given a, uh, a method that you can flatten your um, data. If your target is a relational database that can only accept flatten data, then you have to do this flatten process. But for my use case, uh, this is never called because Terminus DB can accept complex structure. So it doesn't need to be flattened. And you see here that um, this is just a uh, log uh, logic that if anything go wrong, we'll have to store it in a log. But um, so what happened is that we, for example, if a record stream, so we would construct the record, um, and then we will store them all together. Or oh, first of all, we have to validate them so it matches with the schema. Make sure the record is correct, and then um, we would have to construct the data. So this is all what it does. So it will convert the record stream from. So it's a JSON format. That's a JSON schema format, but we want it to be JSON LD, which is the format that Terminus DB use. So all this is doing that conversion, some type conversion if it's needed um, as well. So uh, if it's a schema, schema stream, it will also construct the schema according to the schema provided. Again, it's mainly uh, is converting the um, JSON schema into JSON LD format that Terminus DB can recognize. It's just a few um, things that need to prepare it so to put it into Terminus DB. And afterwards, uh, we'll use the client, the Terminus DB client, to uh, 
put the stream of schema and the stream of um, records in uh, into the the backend, the terminus DB database. So um, this is how it works. Let's have a look at how it actually works. <laughs> so go back to our tutorials. Like I said, uh, we can get some GitHub data by using the terminus DB target in conjunction with a GitHub tab. So um, I will just quickly go through a lot of uh, setup details here, and then I will show you the tool in action. So um, there are a few ways to use a terminus DB target. You can use it to connect to a local run terminus DB Docker image, which is open source and free that is available. So you can use the bootstrap that we have created uh, on GitHub and get the Docker image, provided that you have Docker installed in your computer and it will run locally and um, it will run on your local host and you just have to set it up uh, following the instructions. Uh, the other option is to use Terminus X, um, which right now is in uh, public beta. Uh, so you can sign up and have a look. <laughs> um, so the advantage of using Terminus X is that it provided a dashboard, something similar to this, which um, for demonstration purposes, is very easy to show you what's inside. But uh, how it works is highly similar to using Terminus DB locally. It's just that the setup will be a little bit different. For a local setup, you don't have to use a JWT token, which is available on your um, dashboard if you decided to use Terminus X. So after that, um, of course, you have to have the tool install. So for the tab GitHub, it's also on PyPI. Uh, you can pip install it, but because like I mentioned earlier in the talk, um, different tab and targets may use a different versions of single Python. So to avoid those clashes, we would have to install the tool in a separate um, virtual environment. So luckily Python come with a VN, which is uh, a um, virtual environment manager. Um, they are included in your Python installation, so everybody should have it. Um, you can use VM to create new environment. So I call this one tab GitHub. And in tab GitHub, I install tab GitHub and then deactivate it. Um, there are also a few things that you need to do to prepare the tab for it to work. Um, for example, you have to set up a config file like this that store um, all your um, information. For example, you have to get an access token from GitHub. Uh, you have to put the repository in the format of owner slash repo. Um, also, the date that you wanted to start getting data. Um, and then um, we have to do discovery. So like I said, most um, tab would require a discovery mode to get all the available streams. So this is the script that you can run. Um, is So the first part is just that because we installed a tool in this uh, different Python environment, we just have to get it from the bin. And then set the configuration file to be the one that you just set up this one here above. And then um, you have to use the discover flag to um, say that we are running it in discovery mode. For all the results, we don't want it to be in the standard output. We will, well, it will be in standard output, but we want to put them in a file. So we put them in the properties.json. So properties.json will be a huge JSON file in this case. Uh, but you only need a few streams. So in our case, we want the stargazers. So look for the stargazer stream and then set it into selected 
is true. So that's the top part that we have to prepare. Next is the terminus DB target. So uh, the terminus DB target again can be installed from PyPI, similar operation as the tab. We just create a separate Python environment and then install it. So the advantage of staying in the target terminus DB environment is that it will allow the terminus DB commands to be usable in your terminal. So now inside a new directory, you can use terminus DB command to start a project, which you will be asked a few questions. For your local setup, it's quite straightforward. But if you're using terminus X, just get the information from your dashboard to um, put all your endpoint, team name, and also set up your JWT token access like this. So this is the local version. Um, after that, then we can um, run the run the script <laughs> or run the setup, run, run the pipeline. So um, here we will run the tab and then uh, we can use the shorthand for configuration with dash C and then with the config file and then properties, we want to take the properties.json. So this is the tab. This will get all the information, the stargazers from GitHub. We want to pipe them into the target. So we have a pipe operator here. And then we'll run the target, use our config.json as the configuration file. After that, the data will be in terminus DB or terminus X in your target. <laughs> so also you can control the buffer size. Um, the default is a thousand, but if you want to increase the buffer size, you can do so by changing the configuration here. So as uh, you can see here, I have already done the setup. I just haven't uh, piped in the data yet. So as you can see here, um, I have a terminus DB log and the log is showing that I'm running it on terminus X. I have the GitHub stars, which is my, um, my data product and there's nothing there. So it's just creating the initial schema. So there's nothing inside. Uh, if you don't trust me, I can show you what, uh, data are in this database, which is nothing. <laughs> So, um, so I've already done all the setup, but there's nothing currently in the data base or data product. So right now we will, um, so we have set up everything. We have set up the configuration file. We have done the discovery mode and create a properties.json. So, um, I have created a cheat because I can never remember that, um, this magic spell. Or I can just copy it from here, this magic spell <laughs> that I can run the pipeline. So um, let's do this, shall we? So uh, let's hope that it works. Okay, there are some operations. Um, you don't have to read all of them. That's quite a huge operation. So now it stopped because it had guessed all the, the stream from GitHub and then it's pushing it um, to the, um, the database. So we have a metrics at the end. So it shows that we have 1,560 record. So supposedly we have uh, around uh, 1.5K, uh, 1, 1,500 um, star cases in the terminus DB repo. Let's have a look and verify it. So let's go back to Terminus DB and see how many stargazers we have. So as you can see, we have, okay, so it got round up. So it's 1.6K, which matches with our numbers. So let's look at our dashboard here. So have a look at the GitHub star. So we can have a look at the schema 
Now we have the users and the stargazers. So this is uh, matching with our JSON schema. If we inspect the JSON schema, uh, where was it? Uh, here. Um, yeah, you can see very clearly here. Uh, it just said that we have selected the stream. But uh, if you inspect closer, that will have the user and the schema. So let's look at how many stargazers we have. So we have 1,560 stargazers, which is great. And the last thing, let me clear this up. Let's look at our log. We see that we have inserted the stargazers with two batches. So our buffer size is 1,000. So the first 1,000 is inserted with the, this first insert log here. Uh, well first commit. The second one, the rest of it, the 560, is installed here. Uh, is insert here. So this is how we can quickly um, transfer the data from GitHub to Terminus DB. So to close this talk, um, I'll give you this information. Um, if you are interested in Terminus DB, feel free to join our community on Discord and we are happy to chat with you. Last thing, I promised to talk about Pyjamas Conference that all of you are invited in. It's uh, on the 4th of December 2021, which is a Saturday. Uh, there may be some discrepancy because of time zone, but it will be a 24-hour streaming and it's free to attend. For further details, go to pyjamas.live to have a look. Um, we will be looking forward to see you there. So that's the end of my talk. Bye. So welcome back to the live Q&A session. And for this track, it's, it's um, data and IoT track. Um, so we've got uh, Chuck Ting Ho um, from um, Terminus Database with us. Um, she has given a talk on um, ETL and um, this is going to be her Q&A session. So if you have any question, just raise your hand or you can type in the, the question and I'll be reading out for you guys. Okay, so um, I've got some question anyway. I, I've read, I've, I've actually listened to your talk. Um, so, um, my question would be um, Singer.io. Um, Singer.io Singer um, is a very interesting platform, but um, I've been wondering about the ETL um, because it's open source, and um, since it is an open open source software, it 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 may need some modification to to suit the business. So, could you elaborate more about how to? Um, put it in the business and then make it run through. Yeah, so um, the idea is that like, cause uh, seeing that the I always like um, is developed with Python. So um, so if you kind of think that the uh, existing tab and target doesn't suit your uh, particular use case, you can actually um, either clone the assist existing one and modify it or just, you know, um, build your own. So from my experience, it's quite easy to get started to build one because, oh, um, yeah, so the, 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 the advantage of it is that like, cause it's standardized the, the kind of the, the middle ground, right? Like where you got all these like a uh, record stream, this uh, schema stream and uh, state stream. So, um, so like as long as you follow that standard, actually everything works. <laughs> so, um, so, so it's, it's, it's quite, uh, easy to work with on because everything is open source again like you don't have to start from scratch you can just you know either use the template or just you know clone someone else work you know that they're all open on github and they're happy to you know you can you can make a fork or whatever to uh, to work uh, on your own thing so which is right. great yeah mm, that sounds like um it's very easy to adapt and adopt the system into into the organization um so could you also elaborate, sorry, uh, could you elaborate more about the ETL steps um, so that um, general audience can understand what we are talking about a little bit? Yeah, so a lot of times there are 
at times that you have to transport data from one place to another. So, um, for example, uh, your company is like uh, maybe like uh, changing your platform, uh, maybe the, the database that you mm -hmm. use like in the old kind of system to a new system that, uh, you know, you may have a new vendor, uh, you know, uh, or, or your whatever happened that you have to port data from one place to another, you can do this um, fairly easily. Another use case would be if you have an API, right? Like uh, you want to get data from some open API, you want to inject data, let's say daily uh, to uh, your database and then which you can collect them and use it later. You can set this up and then put it in a cloud service, schedule it, it would be done automatically. That's another use case. Or even sometimes like internally, um, what we had in the past that in my previous company is that we have, um, some data that is a like raw that is from the system from the user you know our user that's worldwide they would have the data in this uh, database and then we'll have the process to clean it up to get like because because you know like uh, if there are the locks from you know from everywhere there's like a lot of noises so we would know that which field we want and then we can just grab the thing that we want and then put it in um right. uh, another database that is used by the data scientists so um so that's another use case that would be uh, useful. So um, yeah, it just it's just anything that you have to put things from one system to another uh, that you can uh, that that thing I could probably help because you know uh, the the benefit is the flexibility, right? You can have different tap and target that you can use, mm -hmm. or you can build your own, like we just that, talked that, about. That. So, yeah, yeah. Hmm, that sounds very interesting. Um, as per my own experience, okay, um, I've been working with the government agencies and um, one problem, I mean, one obstacle of ETL is the data integration where um, we've got several government agencies and they want to integrate the data all together to make a um, one data center. And the problem is that they have different ETL uh, platforms among the agencies. So would Singer.io solve this problem or do they have to actually convert to Singer.io? Yeah, so the thing is that, for example, if uh, you have different agency, right? Like um, uh, if you're lucky, uh, if for example, it's, it's a, a SQL database, right? Like something mm -hmm. that is universal, then you could probably find a tab that's already working. Uh, if not, uh, you may have to write your own. Even if there's 10 of them, you write 10 of them. But the benefit right. would be you can only like you, you only need one target, right? So instead mm -hmm. of writing, you know, or or maybe you have, let's say, multiple endpoints, then you have to, you know, mm -hmm. the combination would be how, how many. Exactly. Right? <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> yes. But if you have like, but if you're using it, let's say you have two targets, right? You have two teams using two different databases or whatever, then then you need, you know, 10 mm. sources, two target, then it's like 12 that you have to develop, for, even if you have to do everything from scratch. Mm. But if you are building every combination yourself, that would be like 20. So uh, oh, you yes. to save some time there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, um, I, I would I would actually consider Singer.io as a um, alternative for um, open source platform. In this case, I would, I would say that. Um, but... One other thing that we want to take into account is the um, the I, th I think it's the legal boundaries. Like when when they want to integrate the data to, for example, from the hospitals, then in for example in Thailand we, we we've got some weird laws that prevent the hospitals to share their patients' information because of the uh, privacy and. Um, so we cannot actually build the data center for hospitals, which is annoying to me. Mm. It's really annoying. What about your experience? Um, do you have any any kinds of obstacles with respect to um, ETL in various organizations? Yeah, definitely. I understand because I also work in a, a bank before. So, you know, a highly structured organization. Very <laughs> oh, yes. Um, so yeah, the, the paperwork well, is like unimaginable to just get access oh to something. And even when you get access to it, it's kind of very messy because people who manage it basically don't have temporary access. They don't really care to just put things in and out, you know. Um, so I understand the struggle, but I think it's something that like is probably 
there's so much technology can do that you may propose that, oh, this is really good, you know, but mm. then, you know, the decision maker, the problem is that a lot of these organizations, because they usually run in a more traditional way. So the, the decision maker most of the time is the, man, is the manager. Like they may not be like very, right. like, you know, very, um, you know, updated in the technology. Um, so even there is a like, better and more secure and more flexible and more user friendly mm. technology out there, they may stick with the old golden standard, which may be that. Yes. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, I think that's, like, that's something that I definitely encounter personally, but to think about that like i think mm. all you can do we can do is to suggest something that works but mm. i mean it, it, it will be very difficult to uh to really uh you know uh, push the, the change or like uh you know make thing fundamental change but mm. you know we, we do our parts we are we are technical developers and we are not <laughs> uh you know managers so yes so yes i do agree with you in this point mm. it's just Yes, um, I agree with Apishek. Um, those compliance is good cost. Yes, it is. It is really good cost. Yeah, compliance is everything. To me, it is one of the one of the key things to take into account when designing the system. Yeah. Okay. One last question. Um, see, I I listened to your talk. Um, the data lake um, is like a buzzword in Thailand. It's still a buzzword among the organizations. So um, in your opinion, what would make a good data lake from the back? Uh, what would make a good data lake? I would say that uh, I, I actually like, <laughs> I think I talk about that in the workshop that data lake, yes. is my my opinion about it is like the, the downfall is that it's not very structured. A lot of times you are only like access what you put there via, via link or something. And then you have to ask people like who put the data there or who have experience using the data there, like what's in there? Um, how does this structure? What am I expecting to get? So, mm -hmm. um, so that's why during my workshop, I suggest like let's store things in graph and have a schema to, to have the governance, to have the structure, to have people to, uh, yeah. So, so they know what to expect because they can just inspect the schema and the schema can be public. There's not a problem like, oh, I can't, you know, uh, I can't authorize uh, you to mm. see the, the schema because it's sensitive. Well, there's nothing like, well, most of the time it's not sensitive, right? The sensitive thing is in the data itself. So, exactly. um, yeah, you can just share your schema to, or, or just open it to, it's a catalog for people to discover. Mm. And then when they discover it, then maybe they found it useful, then they can, you know, go through all this paperwork, jump through all the hoods and apply to, oh, can I get access, please? I, my team is doing this project and we need to access that data. So um, I think that's that's the idea. And that's how the industry, you know, we we have, uh, you know, in, in my company, people are very passionate about data mesh, which is the mm. idea of like having these oh. kind of, uh, how data, data can be, mesh. Um, yeah, how data can be collaborate can be uh, you know uh, easy to to kind of having its own ecosystem rather than you know uh, like I said manager kind of make decision and then have all this control over data and people who mm -hmm. use it kind of having to jump through all this hoop that can um, can be uh, you know affecting the efficiency. <laughs> so yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. I really enjoy talking to you, but um, I think we are running out of time. We've got 10 more minutes before Audrey Tang will show up. So um, so thank you very much, Chik Ting Ho, for, um, for giving a good, really, really good talk and um, a really, really good Q&A session. So for today, thank you. Also, thank you for yeah. the audience for coming and um, see you in the keynote speech. Of okay. yeah. I'm Audrey fan, so, so I the, would, yes. they, had, uh, they have one question. Have, oh, yeah. have you used uh, why, if yet, then what you thought on that? How different is that from Thinker? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> have you? Um, sorry, I missed the question. <laughs> So the question is, have you used Airbyte? And if, if so, uh, what is your thought about it? Uh, no, I haven't, I haven't used it, but I, I, would, I would look it up. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm going to look at it too. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so I think no more questions. So, yes. So see you again in the keynote. Okay, bye. Bye, bye guys. Okay.